What is going on, New York Giant fans? Welcome back to another Roster Bubble Series video. Please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe to our post notifications so you know when a live stream pops through your drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Also, share this out. It is still the dead time here in the NFL offseason, and not many people are interacting with football content. So, gladly appreciate, share out, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell your cat, dog, hamster, guinea pig, whatever the hell. Um... Appreciate a share out and any way you can get more people to this video, whether it's a video series, the video itself, or the channel too. That would be uh, very helpful. But roster bubble video, again, how I do these videos is I take a player that's on the cusp of being cut. I talk about the background, the competition, how that player could win a spot on the roster, how they could lose a spot on the roster, and then at the end, a prediction. So today is going to be revolving around Gerard Davis. Davis has experience, a lot of experience at the NFL level. He's been in the league since 2017, and I believe by far, I want to say he's the most experienced linebacker in the Giants' room right now. Um, he was drafted in 2017. He was the 21st overall pick out of Florida by the Detroit Lions. Did not work out whatsoever there. Went to the Jets in 2021, did not work out there. 2022, re-signed by his drafted team, so the Lions re-signed him for a little bit, and then the New York Giants picked him up when he got cut. Uh, actually, he was signed off the practice squad of the uh, Detroit Lions, and then he started the Giants' two playoff games after some, as the coaching staff would deem it, impressive performances. Uh, he got probably most of the reps at inside linebacker in that second game against the Eagles, and I believe he had 11 total tackles, so that's what a lot of people said. Hey, listen, you know, Gerard Davis, um, he could probably start next to Jalen Smith or rotate in or do whatever, to be completely fair. And then the New York Giants re-signed him on March 8th to one-year veteran minimum contract. So let's take a look at his stats over the years. In 2022, with the Giants and with the Lions, half a sack that was with the New York football Giants. 14 total tackles. 11 of them were in that game against Philly. A total of one tackle for a loss and one quarterback hit. Also with the New York Giants, he only had one game, and that was one game starting, you know, obviously that second Philly game. And he had three games total with Detroit and uh, barely put up any, any numbers. A total of three tackles, that was pretty much that. In 2021 with the Jets, played in nine games, started five, 25 tackles. That was pretty much that from him. Uh, 2020 with the Lions, his last year with the Lions, 14 games, half a sack, 46 tackles, two forced fumbles the year before that. 11 games, three forced fumbles, a pass deflection, two sacks, 63 tackles. Uh, 2018, 16 games, 16 started, one forced fumble, five pass deflections, a fumble recovery for 20 yards, six sacks, 100 tackles, 10 quarterback hits. Uh, 2017 with Detroit, 14 games started, 14 games played, one interception, a total of three pass deflections, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, two sacks, 96 tackles, four tackles for loss, and four quarterback hits. And also in coverage, going to tell it to you guys right now, he's not very good. Um, I'm not even going to bring up the stats with both the Giants and Detroit last year because it's minimal. With the Jets in coverage, gave up a completion percentage of 91.7. That's uh, quarterbacks completed 11 out of 12 passes against him. 96 yards, one touchdown, a passer rating of 127.8. I'm going to chalk it up as this just to make it shorter. 100% completion um, given up in 2020. Over 140 passer rating and two touchdowns. In 2019, over 115 pass rating, one touchdown, 78.4% completion. And in 2018, when Pro Football Reference started tracking the coverage stats, 69.2% completion, two touchdowns, given up 95.6 passer rating. Um, he also had 17 pressures that year, which was his second year in the league. So there's that. Um, also, in terms of snaps, in the one game, he played with the Giants, 96% of the snaps, so he was on the field 96% of the time. 
Um, no special team snaps from him, but going back to the Jets, 35% of the snaps in those nine games, 34% of the snaps in those 14 games with the Lions in 2020, 87% of the defensive snaps in those 11 games in 2019 with the Lions, uh, 99% in 2018 for those 16 games with the Lions, and then his rookie year, 86% of those snaps on defense uh, in 14 games with the Detroit Lions. So let's chalk it up to this before we get to the competition. Veteran with a lot of experience, but it's not a lot of good of experience. Um, I should say not a lot of good experience to be proper English. Um, if you look at PFF, if you're a PFF buff, whatever, they don't like him whatsoever. I don't. I mean, I don't look at PFF stats, but... I just know from experience, from talking to people, um, obviously my brother's a Jets fan, he did not like Gerard Davis whatsoever, and I'm not coming in just to diss Gerard, Gerard Davis, but I tell it as it is, and many Giants uh, news writers and bloggers and stuff like that, guys who do the film like Brendan Olsen and the uh, guys from Big Blue View, they don't really see a lot of positives with this guy at this point in his career because he's just a journeyman, he's a toss around. And the only reason to prosper hope for this guy is because he's playing next to Bobby Okoriki, which is an upgrade from Jalen Smith last year. The only real positive with uh, Gerard Davis is his production in terms of blitzing and getting the quarterback. His run defense, his coverage, that's all subpar, unfortunately. So there's that. Competition-wise, he's got Micah McFadden and Darian Beavers for inside linebacker two. At least that's what I deem it to be. Now, you could also go outside and say Troy Brown, Deontay Johnson, both undrafted free agents, Cam Brown, who's been a special teamer, same thing with Carter Coughlin, but Micah McFadden and Darian Beavers, I both, I think that they're both going to make the roster, but those two, along with Gerard Davis, are competing for that spot next to Bobby Okariki. Um, or Cam, okay, you know what? For our buddy Bill, I know I've been pronouncing it wrong, and I just thought of it now. Okereke. So Bobby Okereke, going to say it like that from now on. Anyway, with that being said, um, Micah McFadden, Darian Beavers, Rod Davis, all competing for that inside linebacker two spot. Carter Coughlin, Cam Brown, Troy Brown, Deontay Johnson, and Gerard Davis, of course, competing for a spot on the roster too. So how can you win? Show willingness as a blitzer. Make the necessary tackles. Don't get pummeled in gaps. Cover zones well when asked. Coverage has not been his strong suit. It's been one of his weakest suits over the last few years in the NFL. And the Giants don't have Jalen Smith anymore. They do not. Um, they have Bobby Okereke, who's solid in coverage. He's not great. He's not all pro level, but he's also not terrible like Jalen Smith was either. So he's got a better accompaniment next to him, and the coaching staff likes him. So right now it could look going into camp that Gerard Davis is going to be that second linebacker. And when you get the opportunities, make the most of them. Going to the uh, showing willingness as a blitzer, Don Martindale loves to blitz. Micah McFadden had a couple of sacks last year. Darian Beavers could be a monster for the Giants in the future. Gerard Davis, I mean, you've been great with sack production, or at least solid with sack production over the last few years. Obviously not with the Jets, because the Jets, I guess, didn't know how to use you in that situation. Um, not a very blitz-heavy defense, surprisingly. Maybe? I don't know. But anyway, show willingness as a blitzer, make the necessary tackles. Tackling has not been a strong suit, though you will look at 100 tackles in his second year 96 tackles in his rookie year whatever he's got high percentages of missed tackles and i get it um you know for blake martinez it might be high for another inside linebacker in the nfl that racks up 100 plus tackles a year it might be high but gerard davis he's not that good of a linebacker he is a guy getting tossed around and trying to make a roster spot at this point um don't get pummeled in gaps the giants biggest problem against the run last year was the lack of gap discipline and guys just getting bullied by interior offensive linemen. Gerard Davis weighs in at 242 pounds. That's about Micah McFadden size. Move around. You know, use your size and use your frame to get around these guys. Whether it's speed that you have or size, whatever works to your advantage, meaning Gerard Davis, use it against these interior offensive linemen. Because truth be told, in this preseason period, whether it's training camp or the actual games themselves, you're not going to be facing ones a ton. Yes, when you're with Okereke, you will be. 
but you're going to be facing a lot of twos, a lot of threes, guys trying to compete for backup spots on their respective rosters. And I think Gerard Davis can overpower a lot of those guys. So how can he lose? Injury. Uh, he suffered a lot of injuries over the last few years. Not a good thing. Um, I know he missed a couple of games with the Jets, missed a lot of games with the Lions. And as I said, you know, he has a lot of experience, but he also some injuries as well. No gap discipline. The Giants need linebackers that can discipline their own gaps. You know, make plays so that their teammates can make even bigger plays. Be there. You know, be there for your teammates. It's a team sport, not an individual sport. It's not tennis. Doesn't possess necessary traits as a blitzer. Um, I would like to think that Don Martindale is going to put him in positions to straight up blitz. Um, you know, sometimes it could be all seven guys in the box or whatever the case or the scenario may be in the preseason because it's going to be a vanilla playbook and the Giants will be testing new things out. And, you know, that's just the way the NFL is. But I think Don Martindale is going to put every single one of his linebackers in a position to blitz. And if Gerard Davis doesn't get there on a respective amount of snaps or just in any of the time periods that he has to get to the quarterback, that's going to be an issue because guess what? The only thing working for him was his blitzing ability and getting to the quarterback his entire career. Otherwise, it's been a wash. So how can he win? Show willingness as a blitzer. Make the necessary tackles. Don't get pummeled in gaps. Cover zones well when asked. How can he lose? Injury, no gap discipline. Can't cover when asked and doesn't possess necessary traits as a blitzer. I do have him making the roster. Despite my negatives about Gerard Davis, I think the Giants like him. The coaching staff, I think, likes him. They got him back. The Giants can cut him, though. He is on a veteran minimum contract. So if Darian Beavers and Michael McFadden show up like we expect them to, or maybe there's another guy like Carter Coughlin or Cam Brown that really shows up and he takes Gerard Davis' spot, it's not going to be an issue for the Giants because guess what? It's a veteran minimum contract. They don't have any, you know, uh, consequences cutting him. It's not like dead cap or this, that, and the other thing. It's a veteran minimum contract. It's not going to hurt them. But I have him making the roster. He's got a lot of experience. I don't like the idea of him being on the roster, if you want my honest opinion, because you have Okereke. Just the idea, it's kind of like last year where you had Tay Crowder and then Austin Calitro, who had no business being on the roster, but because he flourished in the preseason with two interceptions, a pick six, and all these other different things, he made the roster. So we'll see what happens with Gerard Davis. Hopefully he can improve his play if he does make the roster. But like, comment, subscribe to all the good stuff. Turn on post notifications so you know when live stream pops. Drops. Appreciate you coming back. Share this out. Do all the good stuff. Releasing one of these every single day until the middle of training camp. So do all the good stuff, guys. And we'll see you next time. Go Big Blue. <laughs>